Good morning and welcome to St. Mother Theodore Guerin Parish. As we enter this third Sunday of Advent, let us take a moment and calm our hearts and minds as we prepare for the coming of Jesus. Our gathering song will be Lift Up Your Hearts, found in your journey book, number 593. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And today we reach a halfway stage of our Advent season and we give thanks for John the Baptist who bore witness to Jesus, the light of the world. As we light the third candle on the Advent wreath, let us pray that we too will spread the light of Christ in the darkness of our world so that all may know Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. Now I'd like to invite the Liz families, please like the third candle. You want me to do those intentions? You came as our Redeemer, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the light of the world, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You lead us to the Father, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. 
Shout for joy, O daughter Zion. Sing joyfully, O Israel. Be glad and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You have no further misfortune to fear. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, be not discouraged. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a mighty Savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness and renew you in his love. He will sing joyfully because of you as one sings at festivals. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm response will be, cry out with joy and gladness, for among you is the great and holy one of Israel. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
that for the Savior and prepare the way of the Lord. Make a highway for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. The crowds asked John the Baptist, What should we do? He said to them in reply, Whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they said to him, Teacher, what should we do? He answered them, Stop collecting more than what is prescribed. Soldiers also asked him, And what is it that we should do? He told them, Do not practice extortion, do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages. Now the people were filled with expectation, and all were asking in their hearts, whether John might be the Christ. John answered them all, saying, I am baptizing you with water, but one mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to loosen the thongs of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Exhorting them in many other ways, he preached good news to the people. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. So today is the third Sunday of Advent we call Gaudete Sunday, so we, which means in Latin, it would mean to rejoice, the rejoicing Sunday. And you see my vestment today, I'm wearing the rose or pink. Some people said pinks look very good on me, but I said I can wear only twice a year. But this is a rejoicing because we are more than halfway you know, to come closer to Christmas. And all the readings today is talk about rejoicing and live happily lead joyfully. So why do we have to rejoice? You know, we live in this world with a lot of, you know, turmoil, a lot of difficulties, especially during the last two years, a lot of things going on. Sometimes we feel worry, anxiety. And how can we rejoice during the midst of everything's happening? I think we have many reasons to rejoice. We rejoice because the Lord is with us, but the Lord is in our midst. But it has been with us for more than 2,000 years that we should rejoice and remind us that with God, God is with us and so we have nothing to be afraid of. And we rejoice because the Lord, you know, we wait in joyful hope for the second coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And all the readings today, especially the first reading from the book of Zephaniah, call the people of Israel to be strong and rejoice because the Lord has removed the churchmen against them. You know, rejoice because the Lord has removed the churchmen against them. And he called them to rejoice in the Lord and don't be discouraged because the Lord is in our midst of mighty saviors with us. As we heard in the song, you know, cry out with joy and gladness for among you is the great and the holy one of Israel. So that's a reason for us to rejoice. And also St. Paul tells us that he calls his community to rejoice in the Lord always and trust in the Lord. When we trust in the Lord, when we have God with us, we will feel joyful. That's St. Paul calls us to do. And he asks them, try to live in kindness and generosity and trust in the Lord, in the hand of the Lord. In the gospel, you see how John the Baptist, the three groups of people came to them and said, you know, what should we do? 
What should we do to be joyful or to be, you know, to live in the life of the Lord? And John told the first group that whoever has two cloaks should share with the person who has none, and whoever has food should do likewise. In other words, he called them to live in kindness and to be generous to others. And also share with what to, you have to those who are less fortunate than us. And the second group, who was a tax collector, came and asked him the same question. He told them, "Stop collecting more than what is prescribed." And also the soldier asked him, and he told them, "Do not practice extortion. Do not falsely accuse anyone, and be satisfied with your wages." So John the Baptist didn't ask. The people to do anything superior, but very ordinary thing in their daily life. You know, he asked them to share and collect only what is appropriate, be satisfied, and look deeper. Each with these questions requires the people to enter into a new and different relationship with those around them, and to change their ways of life. I think that is the. Reason that we rejoice, and that is a call that we are doing this Advent season to change the way of our lives, to change to the new way. If we haven't thought about that, if we haven't changed our life in the life of Christ, if we haven't changed our life to be the light of, you know, concerning about others, and we need to focus ourselves not on ourselves but on others. And they're good. And if John the Baptist asks the same question today, what should we do? You know what? Do you think his answer? I think we ask him, what should we do to prepare for Christmas? I think he, John will tell us. Very simple answer is that you should live in kindness and be generous. And each of us should be fulfill our obligation with God and others. And we should share and be generous to others in our lives, especially during this time. It's a season of giving, a season of appreciation, a season of grateful. At a few weeks ago, we just celebrate Thanksgiving. That remind us that we're grateful for many things, for all the blessings that the Lord has bestowed upon us. And during this Advent season, also remind us again as a season of giving. I know that many of you are very generous to give into the, you know, giving trees and to help to those those around us. But I told you before. Normally, I talk about you know joy. The word joy, J O Y. You know, when you put Jesus, you know, others before yourselves, and you make your life joyful, which means always put Jesus first, always put God first in your life. And always think about others. If the husband and wife and the children, you think about your husband or your wife or your children before your own. I think that kind of we call sacrificial love, is to sacrifice our lives for others before ourselves. And we, when we do that, we make our life will be live in joy, live in happiness. And I see many people. Sometimes I think you feel the same way when you give something to people. You feel the joy when you when someone come and ask our help, and we give something, and we feel like I really did something good for that person. So even that person feel the joy, but for us as well when we give. You know, last week I had an email from a person. She emailed me and she said, "I very embarrassed to ask you about, but it's very difficult." That one of my family member, my brother-in-law, had passed away, and nobody is working, and we don't know how to bury him because we don't have any money. When I heard that, especially during this time, it's very hard feeling. And I did call her, and I said, "We can do anything to help you, especially to bury your brother-in-law." I think sometimes we don't think about there are many families who are in need, especially during this time, and we can do our best in our community, especially in your family, and we help one another, especially with your generosity, that we can 
help our community to grow, or with your generosity, we can help those who are in need, especially in food pantries, especially in the Vincent de Paul society, for those who are in need, even financially, even for food. And we, when we do that, we will really bring the joy of Christ to others. So like John the Baptist, you see, he denies, you know, being the Christ himself, because people point him and said, are you the Christ? He said, no, I'm not the Christ. The one is mightier than me. See how John the Baptist point Christ to others. I think we should do the same, learn from John the Baptist, to bring the joy of Christ, to bring Christ to others. And when we do that, and we have, when they have Christ with us, they will have joy. And today we celebrate also our Lady Guadalupe. Yesterday is a great uh, celebration last night at 7.30 here. And to celebrate our Lady Guadalupe, and today is a day, December 12. And you look at the picture of Mary, she looks like she's pregnant. And she appeared to Diago, and she just wants to introduce to the world, I bring Christ to you, I bring Christ to the whole world. I think we should learn from Mary as we celebrate today is Our Lady Guadalupe. She's a patroness of the America. Let us learn from her, always say yes, always open herself to accept the will of God in her life so that she always live in joy. That's why she proclaimed the Magnificat. My soul proclaimed the greatness of the Lord, and the Lord has done great things for me. The Lord has done great things for us, especially during this season. Let us celebrate. Also, let us come to the sacrament of reconciliation. You know, we have reconciliation next Tuesday. And I, I know many of you during the pandemic, we didn't have time, you didn't have chance to go to confession. Maybe it's a great opportunity to go and bring to the Lord so that you will feel joy and you will receive God's grace and the joy of, you know, forgiveness, the joys of greatness, the kindness, and we seek God's most love and mercy in our lives. And when we do that, we will feel truly joy in the Lord. So may the Lord give us a generous heart in order to love Him more and always live for others. And when we do that, we will always rejoice in the Lord. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, be God not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was the incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontic Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to church the living and the death and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceed from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has broken to the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. So confident in God's care for us, we bring our prayers before him with one voice. For the church in North America, who claims Our Lady of Guadalupe as their patron, that we might have the humility of Juan Diego and be open to hearing the word of God in unexpected ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our elected officials, that they might be guided by the Holy Spirit to make decisions that reflect the common good for all, especially those who are most vulnerable. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For this local community, that our preparation for Christmas might be authentic and that our actions and service to one another might reflect the confidence and joy we have in the good news of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our newly wedded couple, Chauncey Tan and Eunice McGowan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those being baptized into our faith community, Lelea Guadalupe Manjare, Michael Francisco Manjare, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, especially those listed in our parish bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died this week, Ellen Sanson, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the intentions for which this Mass is offered, Michael Sheehan, Tony Marzullo, birthday, Kenneth Marzik, birthday, Anthony Zarelli, Patrick and Kim Haggerty, wedding anniversary, Stanislaw Eufer, Maria Close, Alicia Toos, James Anderson, Anna and Roman Romantic, Dolores Laconti, Nick DeCiani, Sabatino and Conchetta DeCiano, Robert, Robert Pinto, birthday, Celia Neary, birthday, Frank Pudlow, James Highland, Primo and Bonifacia Kiakos, Jean Klipniach, birthday, Anthony DiCaro, Anna May Sheehan, Harris Lee, first anniversary, Jeannie Chalet, birthday and continued good health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the prayers that we hold in our hearts, in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty Father, hear and answer our need this day, and to our intercession, our Blessed Mother, help us always to be closer to her Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We have second collection today is for the retirement fund for releases. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you. 
Acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophet foretold him, the virgin mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that we may find us watchful in prayer and exulting in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with drones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end, we acclaim. <laughs> Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. 
Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and place our bishop, all the clergy, and for all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse. With the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, "Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation." Deliver us, Lord. We pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of Your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and glory are Yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, You said to Your apostles, "Peace I leave you, My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of Your church." And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us share some sign of peace with one another. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter to my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
For all of those who are celebrating this Mass virtually, please pray as I read the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace Christ. you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. 
We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feast to Christ our Lord. Amen. Reconciliation is at St. Cyprian's at 7 p.m. Tuesday, December 14th. Please join us at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, December 15th at St. Cyprian for an Advent reflection, Isaiah in word and song. Extended Reconciliation is at St. Celestine's Saturday, December 18th from 3.30 to 4.45 p.m. A, sp a Polish-speaking pe priest will be available. A plot key is available at St. Cyprian Church and the Pastoral Center for a, two do a donation of $2. Please see the bulletin for all upcoming Advent and Christmas events. All right, as you heard the announcement, I really encourage you if you haven't been to Confession, in the last two years or last year, maybe it's a good opportunity. We have Sacrament of Reconciliation service uh, on Tuesday at 7 p.m. at St. Cyprian, and also next Saturday from 3.30 to 4.30, and also Polish uh, a confession also available for Saturday, last Saturday. Also today is a teen mass. It was good to have many teen members who will join the choir today. They did a good job, so thank you. Very nice. I've seen a lot of teens today at Mass, so I really encourage and invite everyone, all the teens, if you are 7th grade, 8th grade, or high school, or under 20 years, or if you're still like a teen, which means 19, it's still a teen. So you can come into the gym, there's a, the, the hall, you can go there, and there's a pizza for you, and also open gym and some activities. So please don't go there, and if your parents, maybe your parents can go there and wait for them. And I really encourage this. this. is the first time we've tried to do it maybe once a month to invite all the teens. We have a lot of teens. They are the church. They are the, not the future because I really encourage everyone to participate. We're going to prepare, you know, ask them to be a lecturer, to be an usher, and to be more involved. Because sometimes I know that all teenager they say it's very boring to be at Mass because they don't do anything. That's why we want them to participate. If they have a gift, they can Enjoy the choir. We can have more members in the choir. If they can play some instrument, they can do that and help in different, many different ways. But please come to the gym because we order some pizza. I don't want to eat all the pizza and Father Moses. Only two of us. So, so please come to the gym and get some activity for the for the kids, for the uh, the teenager. So thank you. And also Father Moses did remind me. Yesterday we have a great celebration of Ave Guadalupe. So there's some of the sweet bread and some things for you to take home. So there's a table in the back there. We see the picture of our little Guadalupe in the back. Please come and get the, the sweet bread or cookies or something for you to celebrate today, our little Guadalupe. So let us turn to our Blessed Mother as well. And uh, please say, Hail Mary, full of grace. Full of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Our Lady of Guadalupe, pray for us. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Now let us go to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our closing song can be found in your journey song book number 274, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.